Do you have numbness, tingling, burning, pins and needles, the sensation of bugs crawling under your skin, tremors? All of these symptoms are sensory symptoms. And one question I hear a lot from my Missing Link members is, why are my exercises not helping my numbness or my tangling or burning or pins and needles? And it's a great question and I have a great answer for you. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Gretchen, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist. On my channel, you will find videos that will help with exercises specifically for multiple sclerosis, as well as symptom management strategies that you can implement right away to help you start conquering your symptoms of MS. The first thing that's really important to understand when it comes to sensation or sensory symptoms of MS is why they are happening in the first place. And there's a great reason why your strengthening exercises and your balance exercises and stretching is not helping your sensation. There are two main things that can cause sensory changes when you have MS. One is actually not related to MS at all. One thing that can cause sensory changes like numbness, tingling, burning, and pins and needles is when your nerves are being pinched. And this can happen if you have really tight muscles somewhere in your body. For example, if you are having numbness or tingling, any sensory symptom down in your foot, one possibility that is not MS related is that some muscle in your low back or maybe your hip or even your thigh or your calf is really tight. Sensory nerves run through our muscles. So when our muscles are really tight, they are essentially pinching those nerves because the nerves are running through the muscles. When those nerves are pinched, that is when you will notice any type of sensory change. For example, if I have a very tight hip muscle, or maybe it's my piriformis muscle or one of my gluteal muscles, if it's tight, I might get sensory changes anywhere down the side of my leg or the back of my thigh. The great news about this type of sensory change is that it often is relieved by stretching out those muscles. So in this example where I'm saying I have a tight hip muscle, I might do a figure four stretch like this one. By the way, this is one of the newest stretches that we've added into the Missing Link. So if you are a Missing Link member, check out the program to look at the figure four stretch. If you're not a Missing Link member, check out the text below if you want to learn more about it. The figure four stretch stretches out your hip muscles. So over time, you might feel less sensory symptoms simply from stretching out this muscle. Or maybe I would do a hamstring stretch or a calf stretch or a back stretch. But when the sensation change is from a tight muscle, all you gotta do is know which muscle to stretch out. Another reason that you might have sensory changes in your legs or even in your arms and hands is from a spine issue. So it might be something like a herniated disc or a bulging disc. And this is something that you should definitely go to your doctor for. They're the ones who will be able to do some tests, maybe some imaging through an MRI to see what's going on and determine the best course of action for you. However, we're talking about multiple sclerosis and there is a main reason that someone with MS might have MS related sensory changes. And that is because you have alterations on the sensory part of your nerve. Let's take a step back and talk about anatomy for just a brief moment here. I promise I won't put you to sleep. Every spinal segment that we have throughout our body, starting all the way up in our neck and going all the way down to our very low back, has two types of nerves. One type of nerve is a motor nerve. The other type is a sensory nerve. When you have MS, you can have demyelination or scarring or inflammation on one of those nerves or both of those nerves. If you have demyelination or scarring or inflammation from MS that is affecting the motor nerve, that will result in symptoms like muscle weakness, difficulty balancing, sometimes tight muscles, difficulty walking, foot drop, and the list goes on. In that case, you would want to do exercises that focus on muscle strengthening, functional exercises, walking exercises, flexibility, balance, posture, core, and the list goes on. But 
If your MS is causing symptoms to the second type of nerve, the sensory nerve, those motor-based exercises will not help. There is a different set of exercises for sensory symptoms. So if you've ever asked yourself that question or asked your physical therapist the question of, why are my strengthening exercises not affecting my sensation? Why are my balance exercises not helping my numbness or tingling? That's why. It's because balance and strengthening help with motor symptoms. But the type of exercise that helps with sensory symptoms are desensitization exercises, which is basically a fancy word for desensitizing the area of your body that has the sensory change, the numbness, tingling, pins and needles, burning, skin crawling. In my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link, we have a full detailed video on desensitization exercises where I explain what it is, I demonstrate lots of different examples. So if you're a member of The Missing Link, check out that video. But for you guys today, I did want to give you one example. Essentially, what you do for desensitization exercises is grab something that you have around your home. I just grabbed this, my bathroom is right around the corner here, and this is a, what is it called? A hair scalp massage shampoo brush. So this is something that's used for your hair. It's currently dry. And I like using things like this because there's two different sensations on this tool. This is rubber, so it's not actually sharp, but it kind of feels pointy when you touch it. And this side, as you can see, is very smooth. It's not sharp at all. So this tool alone has two different sensations. So let me show you how to use it if you're trying to desensitize an area that has sensory change. Let's say this hand is experiencing numbness and tingling. What I would do is grab any item, in this case we're using this hair scalp massage shampoo brush, and you can use either side. Let's say I'm going to start with the pointy side. So if this is the area where I'm noticing numbness in my hand, I can take my tool and brush it around the area. Or maybe I tap it or go up and down or side to side. You want to put the tool on the affected part of the sensory change and just move it around. In an ideal world, doing that will actually increase the sensation. So if I have numbness here and I'm moving around this tool on the palm of my hand, I might notice even more numbness. The idea is that you keep moving it around until eventually it doesn't feel as bad. The numbness is starting to lessen. And you do the same thing for lots of different textures. So on this, I could use the soft, smooth side that feels so different than the pointy side. Does this affect my numbness or not? If not, I don't need to do it. But if it does make my hand feel more numb or it brings about the numbness that is normally there, then I would want to stay here, move it around, try to desensitize the area. Another thing I like using for desensitization purposes is clothing. Clothing is great because it's often soft, but sometimes a little rough depending on if you're wearing jeans or a soft shirt or maybe a cashmere sweater. So you'd want to grab a piece of fabric. It can be a shirt that you're wearing or a dish towel or a shirt that you're not wearing. And same thing, you just rub it around your hand. And if that makes your numbness worse or tingling, burning pins and needles, stay there until it starts to lessen. Regardless, the general guideline is to pick an item, pick a tool that you're going to practice with, and use that tool either until the numbness or sensation lessens or for about three to five minutes. And you can practice this once a day or up to three to five times a day. You can also practice with just one material or lots of different materials. It's up to you. I hope you now understand a little bit more clearly as to why sensory changes happen, why motor changes happen, and a strategy to help you improve both of them. As always, if you're looking for more MS-specific exercises and symptom management strategies, consider checking out my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link. I'll put a link in the comments below where you can learn more about the program and sign up for a Zoom call with me where I can show you the program and answer any questions you have to help you see if it would be a good fit or not. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.